we're going to be looking at principle of superposition. So when two waves are the same type, so same type means they're both radio waves or they're both light waves or they're both sound waves. And if these waves meet, the resulting displacement at any point will equal the vector addition of the separate displacements of the waves. So this animation is showing you two wave pulses that are moving in opposite directions and meeting. And the dark black line is representing the resultant of the two waves. So we're getting a vector addition of the separate displacements. A special case of superposition is constructive interference and these are two, at least two waves of the same type having the same frequency or wavelength and they meet in phase. In phase means that the waves are in step with each other so at the same time the crests of the waves will meet and the troughs of the waves will meet. So we'll now apply principle of superposition at each point along the wave. So at the first point, both the waves have zero displacement. So the resultant is zero. At the next point, both of the waves have a plus one displacement. So the resultant will be plus two at that point. At the next point along, again, they're at zero displacement. At the next point along, both have minus one displacement. So that will give you a resultant of minus two. Next point along, again, they're both at zero displacement. Next point along, they're both at plus one displacement. So the resultant will be plus two. And then at this last point, they're both at zero displacement. So our resulting wave Will look like this. So the waves have reinforced each other, they've added positively to each other, so it's a constructive interference. In this case, the amplitude has doubled because the original two waves have the same amplitude, but you can get constructive interference where they have different amplitudes and the resulting amplitude will be a maximum. But note that the frequency of the wave has remained the same. Another special case of superposition is known as destructive interference. And again, this is at least two waves of the same type having the same frequency of wavelength, but they meet in antiphase. So they meet with a half a cycle difference. So when one wave is at its crest, the other wave will be at its trough and vice versa. And if we apply the principle of superposition at each point along the wave, we'll see that the first point we have zero displacement. At the next point, top wave has a displacement of plus one but the bottom wave has a displacement of minus one so the resultant will be zero at the next point the resultant is zero the next point the bottom wave has a displacement of minus one but the top wave has a displacement of plus one so again the resultant will be zero and the next point they're both at zero displacement. And the next point again, the resultant will be zero and be zero. So you'll see at each point along the wave, they have zero displacements. So the waves have cancelled each other out. So we could say it's destructive interference. And so you get minimum amplitude. 
again we're getting a zero amplitude zero resultant because they the original two waves have the same amplitude but you can get destructive interference with the waves having different amplitudes and that they're meeting in antiphase there are headphones that actively suppress that is reduce sound and this can be particularly important if you want to protect your ears from loud sounds so for example drivers in supersonic cars wear these headphones so they won't get deafened by the sounds from the engine inside the headphones is a microphone that picks up the incoming sound wave you then have electronic circuitry that reverses the sound pattern and a speaker inside the headphone transmits the antiphase sound. So then this antiphase sound interferes destructively with the original incoming sound wave so that you get a minimum sound level produced that reaches the ears.